sepsis and early goal directed therapy. Hi, my name is Eric Wilkie, um, and I'm here to talk about early goal directed therapy for treatment of sepsis. Uh, why am I talking about this? Well, this is the biggest thing since antibiotics for sepsis. So, this is a huge breakthrough. Um, this is based off of a New England Journal article that was published back in 2001. I've been giving this lecture a bunch of times uh, for the since around 2002, 2003, but I still don't think we're exactly where we need to be on uh, an aggressive treatment of sepsis, so uh, that's what we're talking about this today. Well, the first thing is, uh, what is sepsis? We need to look at a couple definitions. Uh, one of the definitions that we start with is usually just the criteria for sepsis or basic sepsis. Now, when we're talking about early goal-directed therapy, this is for severe sepsis and septic shock. Uh, so the uh, initial sepsis is not exactly where we're going to apply these treatments, but uh, it's the starting point. So diagnostic criteria for sepsis. Uh, you have to have two or more of the following criteria. Um, either a fever of greater than 38.3, which is 101 degrees Fahrenheit, or hypothermia, which is less than 36 degrees Celsius, or 96.8 Fahrenheit. Uh, that's one criteria. Another would be pulse of greater than 90, or two standard deviations above whatever the normal range is for that patient's age. Uh, number three would be tachypnea with a respiratory rate of, uh, respiratory rate of greater than 20, or PaCO2 of less than 32 tor. And the final uh, criteria would be white blood cell count of greater than 12,000 or white blood cell count of less than 4,000 or greater than 10% bands. So you need two of those four items to meet criteria for sepsis. Now when we talk about severe sepsis, uh, you have to have those criteria or two out of the four criteria plus one or more organ systems uh, with active dysfunction. And that can include acute lung injury, coagulation abnormalities, thrombocytopenia, altered mental status, renal liver or cardiac failure, and hypoperfusion with lactic acidosis. And then finally, septic shock is the presence of sepsis with refractory hypotension. So that sets up the basic definitions. Now, what's the basic principles behind shock and septic shock? Um, and just to make it very, very basic. Uh, since my brain is small, I like things simple. I think of three things. Number one is disseminated, uh, disseminated intravascular coagulation, or DIC, uncontrolled vasodilation, which leads to the hypotension, and the third thing would be decreased oxygen use or delivery. Now, the root of all that evil uh, is typically an endothelial damage. So you can have tumor necrosis factor, interleukins, prostaglandins, bradykinase, free radicals, all these different things that lead to permeability and capillary leaks, plus you get endothelial damage um, and deposition of uh, proteins that start the clotting cascade, and you can also have some hemorrhage. So you can see with this capillary leak and uh, this fluid that uh, leaks out in the interstitium, the diffusion distance for oxygen increases. Uh, you start using up all your clotting factors with uh, um, at least to the DIC, uh, and so it is a huge mess. Uh, so. Emmanuel Rivers was the lead author uh, for this early goal-directed therapy, and they looked at how they can uh, aggressively attack these different items to, to make a difference in the mortality of uh, our septic shock patients. So speaking to this early goal-directed therapy, uh, first let's talk about number needed to treat. Again, if you remember, number needed to treat is 1 divided by the absolute risk reduction. So in this particular case, the, the patients that were treated with the early goal directed therapy had an in hospital mortality of 30.5%. Uh, the uh, control group had an in hospital mortality of 46.5%. So the delta is 16%. So our absolute risk reduction is. So if we take 1 and divide by 0.16, that gives us 6.25. So that means we have to treat 6 and a quarter patients uh, to save the life of 1, which is actually pretty good numbers. So. What do we do? How do we do this early goal-directed therapy? Well, uh, there's a couple things we do in parallel. Uh, obviously, you need to give antibiotics, and you want to give antibiotics early. Uh, then you have to assess the patient and say, do I need to intubate them or not? Uh, so if they need to be intubated, go ahead with intubation. Uh, you'll probably need sedation and paralytics with that. And then you set up for a central venous line and an arterial line. Uh, the, the central line uh, you're going to use for measuring uh, central venous pressure. Uh, that's a key point in uh, directing our fluid therapy. 
And the arterial line is also used for measuring uh, mean arterial pressure, uh, which will also be used in the guiding, uh, guidance of this therapy. So after those are in, you give 500 cc aliquots of crystalloid until your CVP is 8 to 12. So basically you're filling the tank. You want to fill the tank. Uh, so once we know that we've replaced our intravascular volume by a normal CVP in the range of 8 to 12, then you move on to pressors if the patient remains hypotensive, and that's defined as a mean arterial pressure of less than 65. And you can use whatever pressure you want. Um, as best I can tell looking at all the, all the different data, uh, these pressors really are all the same. They all work similarly, they have similar outcomes, so there's probably no difference. The next thing is you measure the central venous oxygen saturation, and if it's less than 70%, uh, you need to do a couple of things. One uh, is transfuse until the hemoglo uh, hematocrit is greater than 30. Uh, and then you can start an ionotrope like uh, dobutamine. And so this central venous uh, oxygen saturation states one of two things. Either we're not delivering a lot of oxygen, and so even though we're extracting a, a certain amount, we're starting off with a low number. Or we're starting out with a fairly normal number, and your tissues are so starved for oxygen that it's extracting this huge amount. Uh, so the, either the dobutamine or the transfusion are trying to attack both of those two arms. So after those are in, you give 500 cc aliquots of crystalloid until your CVP is 8 to 12. So basically you're filling the tank. You want to fill the tank. Uh, so once we know that we've replaced our intravascular volume by a normal CVP in the range of 8 to 12, then you move on to pressors if the patient remains hypotensive, and that's defined as a mean arterial pressure of less than 65. And you can use whatever pressure you want. Um, as best I can tell looking at all the, all the different data, uh, these pressors really are all the same. They all work similarly, they have similar outcomes, so there's probably no difference. The next thing is you measure the central venous oxygen saturation, and if it's less than 70%, uh, you need to do a couple of things. One uh, is transfuse until the hemoglo uh, hematocrit is greater than 30. Uh, and then you can start an ionotrope like uh, dobutamine. Um, and then you admit them to the ICU and get them out of your emergency department. Now, uh, I've also made some standard order sets that will be on a website. Uh, it's a Word document. Uh, it comes with no warranties. You have to uh, look at it yourself, uh, make any adjustments you want. You have uh, free reign to change anything you think you, know, you need to for your institution. Now when I wrote these a number of years ago, I would put in uh, steroids because uh, they talked about giving steroids for adrenal suppression in these septic shock patients. Um, and what we used is a random cortisol level of less than 25. So if your random cortisol level is less than 25, we would give hydrocortisone. Well, as with a lot of things in medicine, uh, times change. Uh, and this last January, I guess in January of 2008, um, there was an article in the New England Journal that looked at hydrocortisone in uh, septic shock patients and basically it said no benefit with steroids. So you may want to just delete that line. Um, and the other thing that people talked about is uh, insulin infusions. Uh, and again, that's not looking too promising uh, with some of the literature that's come out recently. I don't have insulin infusion uh, in my order set. Uh, so, uh, look at that article uh, in the New England Journal and make a decision about whether or not you want to use steroids. Um, I think steroids are, are probably not as useful as uh, we typically think they are. So anyways, that sums up early goal-directed therapy and sepsis. Again, uh, CVP and art line, the big thing is replace the fluids. 500 cc's of crystalloid until CVP is in a normal range, that's 8 to 12. Start your pressors as needed uh, and then uh, increase your oxygen delivery either by dobutamine or um, increasing the hematocrit or both. Anyways, good luck. Uh, feel free to email me with any questions. It's eric.wilkie at gmail.com uh, and the order sets will be put on my blog site which is uh, ericwilkie.com. Thanks.